There is a um, <clears throat> there's a Mozart concerto. I think it's called Cose Fantute. Um, <clears throat> I used to play bassoon, but um, I don't know that concerto. <clears throat> What's interesting though is that the doctor here was treating Guglielmo with a magnet. <clears throat> Today we're going to be talking about electromagnetic fields, electromagnetic radiation. When I was at Hopkins, I was um, very fortunate to work with some of the, uh, the modern giants in public health and epidemiology prevention medicine. Um, the dean that uh, appointed me uh, chief of the prevention program was uh, D.A. Henderson, who um, was credited with wiping out the only disease we've wiped out so far, and that was polio. Um, <clears throat> one of my mentors uh, led the charge on a, the attempt to wipe out uh, tuberculosis until AIDS came along, and then uh, I, obviously that didn't happen. His name is George Comstock. Uh, Dr. Comstock was a uh, a very conservative uh, guy, and he was not one of the... A lot of folks in prevention and public health tend to see everything as a risk uh, factor until it's ruled out. He was not. He was very conservative. He had us to dinner one night at his house and took us out in the backyard with a fluorescent light bulb. It wasn't plugged into anything. He held it up. Uh, in a pasture behind his backyard under a large electric power line. As he began to hold it up, the light, the fluorescent light bulb turned on. His perspective was, look, there's a debate that's been going on about what impact, if any, does electromagnetic radiation have on health? And... Um, he said he believed it clearly will. Uh, as the research continues to go on for the next couple of decades, hopefully it won't take that long, but we will find out. That was uh, mid-80s. It's 30 years later, and it's amazing what we don't know. So... <clears throat> Uh, there are studies that have come out. This one, for example, is a review of uh, electromagnetic force on uh, reproductive systems. And the bottom line was, yes, there does appear to be some, but it's apparently fairly weak. And guess what? More studies are needed. <clears throat> There's actually a book that's been written on the epidemiology of electromagnetic uh, fields and uh, health. It's actually more on the epidemiology. It, it does include a summary, and again, the summary is very interesting in that uh, there's still debate, there's still, the evidence out there is still pretty weak. This was written in 2014. Now, <clears throat> another group that you might be interested uh, in their opinion would be the National Institutes of Health. There is a National Institute of Environmental Health Sciences. Um, they did a report on electromagnetic fields, and they focused on power line frequencies from uh, and electromagnetic fields from those power lines. This was '92, and guess what? Well, I'll I'll read what they said. Um, <clears throat> It was Kenneth Olden, director. That's the first page of the report. And here we go with the second. Basically, there's a summary letter. The science suggesting that ELF, EMF, electromagnetic uh, uh, radiation, exposures pose any health risk is weak. The strongest evidence for health effects comes from associations observed in childhood leukemia and chronic lymphocytic leukemia. It goes on to say that the associations are stronger in childhood leukemia. Now, <clears throat> so at least they're seeing something, enough to put it in a, in a letter, but let's, or, or a cover letter on their major report. Here's what they go on to say. 
The National Institutes of Environmental Health Sciences concludes that th this exposure cannot be recognized at this time as entirely safe because of weak scientific evidence that exposure may pose a leukemia hazard. In my opinion, the conclusion of this report is insufficient to warrant aggressive regulatory action or concern. So some weak uh, regulatory concern. Here's the point, because virtually everyone in the United States uses electricity and is therefore routinely exposed to electromagnetic force, passive regulatory act action is warranted, such as just education of the public. So that's what they said. Again, that was 92. That's what, uh, almost 30 years ago. And again, still amazingly little um, change since then. Well, <clears throat> one of the reasons is, why so little information on it? Um, one of the reasons they touched on here Nearly everyone is exposed to electric, uh, electrical force. Actually, it's a lot more than nearly. The Earth uh, does, I believe it's uh, about a third. The Earth does a significant amount of electromagnetic uh, radiation to humans as well. It's a little bit higher in the poles, the North Pole and the South Pole. Actually, I think three times higher. Uh, than it is at the uh, equator. But everyone on Earth is getting it. We have gotten it forever, at least from the Earth. Now we're getting a lot more of it from electrical um, elect exposure to electrical um, gadgets, gizmos, tools, uh, uh, weapons, media, you, you name it. Uh, anything from an iPhone, and it increases in an iPhone with Wi-Fi uh, when you have your uh, Wi-Fi on, uh, <clears throat> to a Wi-Fi. I'll go into home remediation in just a minute. Uh, but before I do, I will just mention, I have a patient um, who's very interested in this. He's a very smart guy, and he's continued to do research in it sent me some information on it and actually has um, had already purchased a thing called a BEMER, B-E-M-E-R. And the BEMER says that it is, um, it is the greatest because it has a controlled uh, electromagnetic uh, frequency. Now, if you're asking the question that I am, or that I did originally when I saw this, so if there's danger on electromagnetic frequency, why are you uh, putting out a health tool which uh, puts out electromagnetic radiation? Well, <clears throat> the point is, uh, evidently it's the good kind. Now, if you go to Amazon, you can find, look up Beamer on Amazon or Beamer, and you won't find any of those. They don't sell them. I don't think uh, Beamer has more of a high-end approach and more of a an approach to uh, to market through uh, professionals, healthcare professionals. This uh, this item is supposed to be something very similar. If you do uh, uh, type in Beamer on Amazon, this is one of the things that'll come up. It's two. It's about two thousand dollars, eighteen hundred dollars. Now, I look, it's hard to find cost on Beamer or price, but I found a, a site that uh, gives a review of the Beamer. And basically it says the current prices are going to be about seven to $9,000, starting with uh, the, the, what is this called? The Pro, the Pro set, and then going to the, or the Classic set with add-ons that uh, go with them. Now, <clears throat> This, the person that wrote this review knew a little bit about the science, uh, clearly believed in these, um, these things like a Beamer as a health protection device. He did go on to state that the Beamer is a very good one. Um, he gave bad ratings, though, because he said that 
he gave bad ratings from a marketing perspective, saying that look, they way over market this and waste and way up the price. So th these are exp it's expensive to start uh, looking at something like that. Well, what about just uh, remediating your home? Uh, this patient had done a home remediation. It cost about twenty thousand uh, dollars. The vast majority of his cost, fifteen thousand of it, went to uh, three circuit breakers. Um, <clears throat> It's a large house, it was an old house, and he uh, needed to replace all three in order to balance the, uh, uh, that activity. Uh, Wi-Fi, the Wi-Fi router and uh, three ampli Wi-Fi amplifiers, the microwave oven, uh, basically could not uh, mitigate that. He just had to say, look, you know, don't use the microwave oven or don't stand near it when you're using it. Uh, one of the amplifiers was near a family member's chair, so he just moved that. There's a significant uh, decrease with distance. Um, it decreases with the square uh, square root of the distance. So um, distance is a great way to mitigate this. Um, <clears throat> there was a fan near one of the beds. He uh, he he changed. It was an old fan that didn't have good grounding. He greatly decreased the uh, uh, the output on, on that fan, moved it away, so greatly decreased the uh, the exposure. There were uh, several electrical appliances that needed a, uh, a ground wire. Uh, all Wi-Fi appliances have this. There was a Roomba which had Wi-Fi on it. Um, they just He just disconnected the Wi-Fi on the Roomba and Roomba is that um, self-directed uh, vacuum cleaner. So he just dis uh, disconnected the, uh, the, the Wi-Fi on the Roomba. There was, I think, a water heater that was located outside of his office. They moved that um, and again, uh, and did some things to mitigate w with uh, other Wi-Fi's. Remember, you know, even a phone, um, especially with uh, Wi-Fi on will greatly increase the um, the exposure. Now, <clears throat> most of the of uh, the um, research for the Beamer has been done by a Dr. Klopp. Uh, he goes into saying that look, the ma the vast majority of um, the Beamer's work is done by allow. Uh, impacting the muscles of the arteries and arterioles. His perspective is that most of the uh, function of the vasculature is done in the microvasculature. I would agree with that. Uh, the critical group, I would agree that most of the work, uh, <clears throat> the microvasculature is very important. I don't know that I would agree that it has, I don't know that the evidence that this uh, impacts those is that strong. In fact, the, um, the group that did the review criticized him for receiving, um, receiving funds to do, from the Beamer Corporation to do his, uh, to do his research. So, <clears throat> uh, do I think there's a problem? There, I don't know. Uh, there's clearly enough to have continued to raise this concern. Uh, how are we going to find it out if everybody's using electronic uh, and everybody's getting exposure? We need to do what we can to uh, to mitigate it. I'm not getting a twenty thousand dollar mitigation on my house. I am um, spending that money on things that I know that are uh, causing problems. My atrial fib um, and more than anything, uh, insulin resistance. So. Um, Again, I wish I could give you an answer on this. I wish anybody could give us an answer on this. Uh, thank you for your attention.